Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Amber Rain Davis from NotableInk.com. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today. We're going to be doing a watercolor card today using Altenew's Festive Poinsettia stamp set. And I'm really going to be focusing on some of the errors that I made today and how I corrected that. Um, I loved how this flower came out when I first watercolored it. And then I did a couple things that I didn't like so much. So let's get started. So again, we'll be using Altenew's Festive Poinsettia Stamp and Die Set. So in Altenew's new stamp packaging, they have lots of great inspiration. We have a whole fold-out card with suggested colors, suggested other stamp and die sets in order to coordinate or pair with the stamp set. We're also going to be using a sentiment from the Beautiful Day stamp set. I'm going to be using my Altenew Watercolor 36 Pan Set. If you're a fan of Altenew inks, this is a great watercolor set. So to get started, I went ahead and stamped the large flower, poinsettia flower, with Simon Says Stamp Barely Beige dye ink. And you can see that my stamp was a little bit dirty still, and so some of the areas were a little bit darker, but I went ahead and went with that. So the colors that I've mixed together are Coral, Berry, and Fresh Lemon. I wanted to mute down that pink a little bit more with the fresh lemon to get more of a muted, corally appearance. It's unusual for me. I don't usually do pastels and I don't usually use muted colors, but I wanted a soft flower for this poinsettia. So I started off my first layer doing a wet on wet technique. So what I'm doing is using clean clear water on a number six round brush from the Silver Brush Company. And I'm laying just down a thin layer of that water and then I'm dropping in the coral berry and fresh lemon mixture at the base of the petal, um, some along the spine of the petal, and then a little bit around the edges where there would be a shadow. I'm not really focused on the shadows for this first layer. As I go ahead and let this layer dry, I'll come back in and I think I actually end up doing three layers of pigment by the time these petals are done. So there I felt like I got too much pigment on there so I dried off my brush a little bit so that it did turn into a thirsty brush and I was able to suck up some of that pigment that I had put down so that it, I wanted it to more closely match the other petals and for this first layer I wanted to stick with a really light layer. I also wanted to preserve some of the white of the petals so that I would have a nice highlight at the end because for the overall look of this flower I wanted it to be light and kind of airy. So you can see with the layer of water how when you drop the pigment in the water does the work and spreads it out into the petal. One of the things that's important when you're watercoloring is you need to make sure once you go to the next petal that it's not adjacent to one that is still wet. So if you need to step away and do a different area, if you need to switch over to the leaves, you want to make sure you do that and don't do a petal that is next to a wet one. If you do, your pigment is going to run into that other petal. And so you're going to lose, like in this particular instance, if that petal above had been wet, I would have lost my white highlight there at the tip of that petal above the one that I'm coloring now. So typically when you use like a barely beige ink, this might be called like a no line watercolor technique. In this particular instance, even when I'm done with painting the flower, you can still see the veins of the petals, not so much the outline around the flowers, but the veins of the petals. So I don't know that I'd call it a full on no line watercolor, um, but it's close. And I like the fact that you can see the detail of the petals in there. So I've gotten to a point where there really isn't much petals left that I can color without bleeding into the other ones. So I'm gonna switch over to the leaves. So I'm gonna to mix together forest glades, some evergreen, and then after I mix those two together, I wanted to brighten it up a little bit more again, and so I added some bamboo. So when I'm mixing the colors, I had to mix the pink color multiple times during this project and I kind of counted how many swipes I did of each color to roughly get the same mixture each time. Um, 
And I would say this, I would say with this project, I was pretty successful with that. I thought it was interesting when I added this bamboo, how it separated, it almost, it looked like it separated the evergreen pigment there. Um, it, it got like a granulated appearance to it. So, so one of those colors, I think maybe the evergreen or the forest glades must be a granulated color. Um, so I just mixed all of those back together to get a more of a homogenous mixture. But as I was saying, so with the mixing of the colors, which again, I'm pretty new to and haven't done too, too often, I did really feel successful with this particular card and was excited about how I was able to reproduce the mixture of colors each time I had run out and needed more. It's always surprising to me how much watercolor you do need for a project, even though this is, it's not a small flower, but it's, it's not huge, but I, I did run out a few times. So again, I'm doing a wet on wet technique. Since this stem is pretty small, the amount of clean clear water that I put down from the get go was smaller than what I put down in the petals. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do all of the stems. So I'm even gonna do the stems that go down through the leaves. I figured that I probably wanted to highlight that or maybe have that um, crease there in the middle of the leaves be more distinct. So that's why I went ahead and did that. And then after that dries, I'll go back in and do my typical wet on wet technique, similar to what I did with the petals. Um, for some of the leaves, I added a little more green than what was drawn in by the artist. And then also, if you look at the stamp set in the middle of the flowers right there are these, they're not berries, they're almost like petals that haven't uncurled yet, I think is what it is. They're, they kind of almost look like little berry, little circular things. I went ahead and just ignored that part of the stamp and I'm just doing the petals and also drawing in some almost extra stems to kind of, that seemed a little too complicated to get the shading down on that. So I went ahead and kind of just ignored what the image looked like and did my own thing there in the center to simplify things for myself. So we'll, here's where I'm gonna add the stems through here. And you can see I'm, that's where I'm thinking about what am I going to do with those and that's where I decided to ignore it. So I'm going to do a few more stems and then you're going to see me go back to the pink and do this, this last petal that's underneath here. Initially I put a green stem in that and then I wet it and blotted it up with my stamp chamois of all things. Another error. Don't use your stamp chamois. I don't know what possessed me to do that. But then I also got a smudge of who knows what other ink on there. You can kind of see just that little bit of green going down the center there. Um, and I thought it was a leaf, or I thought it was a leaf to start with, but then I realized it was a petal. So I'm just going in with the pink and that will cover it up just fine. That particular leaf or petal, since it's underneath, is going to be in greater shadow. So it should be darker anyway. So that worked out just fine. Now that I've spent time on the leaves and the stems, my petals that I originally did are dry. So what I'm doing is adding additional pigment to the paint that I already have mixed because I want it to be thicker and more pigmented because I'm gonna go back in and do my second layer. So right there is a little curl in that petal. So I wanna darken the base of this petal and then I also need to darken at the tip right underneath where that curled part of the petal is so that we see that depth and dimension right there. So right there is where it curls over. So there's gonna be a little white piece right there at the edge and then everything that's underneath that, that, that curl of the petal is gonna cast a shadow and so it needs to be darker underneath there to show that depth. So. You could do this one or two ways. So at this point with the second layer, I'm still adding clean, clear water, but it's again, less than that first layer. You could also with the second layer, layer go with a um, dry paper and wet brush technique. So dry on wet technique instead of the wet on wet. I did that actually with my third layer of pigment for the flower. 
Um, so here I'm still doing, I'm wetting with clean, clear water, and then I'm dropping in this more pigmented version of the, of the paint mixture. And so this is where I'm going to start to get my shadows and my depth. And I'm still letting the water do the work for me at this stage. When I do my third layer, it's going to be much more me almost using the paintbrush like a marker and drawing in those shaded areas, more like you maybe would with your Copic markers versus a paintbrush. So now that the stems are dry on those leaves, I'm going to go ahead and wet the whole surface of the petal and I'll lay down the green pigment there, similar to I did what I did with that first layer of the petals. So I decide to swipe clean my surface here. I guess there was like a fuzz on the paper and you can see right there, I got pigment there. Um, so you, what you can do to lift that is add some clean, clear water and then lift it up with your brush. And you can see that I switched to a paper towel because I was still using my stamp shampi and that got ink on, on the surface. So I'm moving over to the third layer of pigment on my petals here. And this is a dry, a wet on dry technique. So my paintbrush is wet, my paper is completely dry. And I'm switching back and forth, back and forth between the leaves and the petals and Again, I'm almost using my paintbrush like a marker and I'm really getting super precise uh, shadows in there. So because this is a very pointed paintbrush, I'm able to get a really thin line on the edges and then I'm able to draw that out. So once I get the pigment down where I want it, then I come in with a slightly damp brush and soften the edges so that I don't have any harsh edges where I've added the additional shading and the additional pigment. And I think that that technique works really well. It's, it's very manageable and I feel like I have a lot of control over it when I do it that way. So we're just gonna pause and enjoy this beautiful flower here because it's not gonna stay like this in just a few minutes. I loved where it was here and then I decided to add splatter. And I don't know what happened, but here it is. There's green everywhere, all over the flower, everywhere. So then I decided, okay, I'm gonna have to add more. So I keep adding it, and then I start to get this really manufactured splatter to where the splatters are linear up there at the top. So now I'm wetting the petals to see if I can lift the green ink, that's not working. So then I'm like, okay, well, I just have to add more in a different direction. So now I feel like I have boxy splatters up there. They're going left, they're going right, up and down. I did not like it at all. I thought about like putting my sentiment up there and I just didn't like the thought of it. So I trimmed it with a smaller rectangular die, but I still had the boxy splatter up there. I thought maybe I could put my sentiment up there. I still didn't like it. So then I die cut it out the flower with the flower die and then decided I needed a new background. So here you can see that I have dry embossed the flower dye onto another piece of watercolor cardstock. And I've decided that I'm gonna do some loose watercolor on the background to make it look like maybe there's bunches of other flowers in the back, but they're further away, so they're kind of muted. I decided I needed some more leaves at the bottom, so I did some more dry embossing. I'm having to mix some more paint. Um, so, I don't know if I like this at all while I'm doing it. I did a couple different layers um, and I don't have the video of it, but what I ended up doing is kind of dividing it into the bottom and the top. I added more green around the leaves and for the sky, I used Caribbean sky uh, watered down to put that up in, in the sky. But you can see that my water well over there is pink and I didn't clean my water. So the sky ends up being like a pinkish blue when we're done with it. You can't really tell that it's blue at all. So again, just lots of, <laughs> a lot of maybe not great decisions going on with this card, but I'm still going. I'm not giving up because I loved how that flower turned out and I'm not giving up. So at this point, I'm kind of liking it a little bit more. And then I decide that it's just kind of too much. There's too much going on. So I die cut a white panel and I'm trying to decide between white and gray. I decide that I like the white, 
But let's notice that behind there on that other watercolor one that I did, there's splatter on that. So this time what I did is I put my paint on a block and I flicked it from the block. That was way more effective. So that is how I'll be doing my splatter from here on out. I backed this panel with foam tape, which I prefer the fun foam because I could actually see the wavy gaps in between the pieces of foam tape. I popped up the flower on some dots and I really did like the final outcome. You can see on that left petal there where I had chopped it off with the original die cutting to a rectangle. So there was just a lot going on, but we overcame the obstacles and the overall end product I really enjoy. And I think someone who received the card would love it. So just some examples of things that can go wrong and how you can overcome them. Um, the biggest thing is don't give up. Don't give up on your card, especially when it looks so pretty. You can typically get past it with if you just get a little creative and get inspired to do something a little bit different, like embossing with the flower image and then painting it. I'd never done that before, but I didn't think I would be able to create a flower freehand to match this poinsettia, so that's why I did that. Definitely a technique that I'll probably use again. So I hope that you learned something today. I hope you get inspired to continue your card if you feel like you've made a mistake. And um, I hope that you stop by again. If you did enjoy this video, hit the like button below. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, my blog at notableink.com, and you can follow me on Instagram at notableink. Thanks so much for stopping by and have a fantastic day. At the end, I'll put up some other videos for you to take a look at as well. Thank you so much.